So what's causing this crescent shaped thing, mysterious thing, on the end of these J2 shears? And could this be a manufacturer's defect? That's what the sharpener asked me. <laughs> I was sent these. The sharpener says, my client states that she has had these shears about a year and a half or so. She stopped using them before they started not cutting well. She's a new customer and I don't think they've been sharpened before. And there appears to be a crescent shape chip at the tip of both shears. She's not sure how they got there, but I was wondering, could it be a defect? I'm not sure what the warranty issue is on these. So I'm sending them to you for inspection and sharpening since I do not have the parts to replace once it's been disassembled. I thought it might be a good video. If you decide to make a video, please let me know so I can watch it. Well, here you go. Here's the video. So <laughs> I'm hoping you subscribe because I may not send you the link. Yeah, these have some really unusual screws, but it has an unusual chip on the end. So it's not a huge, huge chip, but it's definitely in here, both of them. It's right here at the tip. And I'm thinking that probably the stylus has been cutting palm to palm and they hit their ring with it or a comb or they're cutting the weft of the hair. Now the other thing I'm noticing here is like sometimes I close them and the tips don't come together and the next time I close them they do. There's some weird things going on here. So I'm just going to take them apart, sharpen them and t take that chip out. This is not a warranty issue not a warranty issue not even if it was a Banica shear shear but um, for certain this brand of shears it's not a warranty thing so I'm gonna take them apart sharpen them let you watch how I sharpen them so I'm gonna be a lot more aggressive with these shears than I normally would be because I've got a lot to take out um, let's take these apart and clean them up well first of all I'm gonna cut with them but we know we know they're not gonna cut because we know there's that big old thing at the tip oh even with my thumb in here I can't make them cut at all those are <laughs> yeah nah, no okay. anything anything we do will be an improvement Let's see how hard these are to take apart you don't have to replace the screw when you take the shears apart see which one of my tools I want to use today. This one I like if I need to torque it, if, it, it, if it's hard to turn. Or um, this one I like for the convenience of um, picking out which section I want to use and it stays right there. Oh, I'm turning the wrong way. That's what I get for talking while I'm working. So we're just going to do one shear at a time. They're both pretty bad. And I'm only going to make you watch me do one of them. I'm not going to make you watch the second one. Because they look like they both have the same problem. Now this is an unusual screw. It's a UFO screw with a rubber gasket in here. Similar to the Jaguar screws, I would say. And let's see if it's got that little inset thing in here. I'm not sure if I've seen this exact shear before with this with this screw. It's always something new. So normally I wouldn't be this aggressive with these shears. I've colored in the edges. And I'm going to start out on this 1200 grit diamond stone. because I've got to get it beyond that nick at the tip. Might have to shorten it to get that, I don't know. So 
So what I'm looking for to see if the silver of the uh, where I've removed along the right line, if it's beyond where that tip is, where that crescent is, as he called it. I'd call it a nick, but crescent, I like the crescent. Definitely, that one's not as bad. Now I'm going to go back to my smoother stone. This is actually 2,000 grit. How many strokes do I do? There's almost like a zen feel when you, like you're smooth, when you feel like you've got it. Now, that metal removes so easy here. I was thinking about when I was sitting down here that I was going to use something really aggressive like this 180 grit. Um, but I don't think I need anything that coarse. It was, um, because that metal removed faster than I was expecting it to. So, hmm, what do I want to use? Feeling through all of mine. I'm more feeling than looking to see what grit. I'm kind of feeling what grit I want. Here's a worn 400 grit. That might be too worn, but let's try that one. Now, normally I would set these at a 45 degree angle because 45 is going to be the optimum angle for sharpness. But because these are already so messed up, I'm going to set this at 40. And this is my clamp. Tighten it down. Tighten it down. <laughs> Tighten it down. Oh, I know. Someone else was using my clamp yesterday. That's why it was so tight. Just needs to be tight enough to hold it. I mean, you're not like your your life depends on this. So all I'm going to do is come in and try to get a burr up here. That burr came up pretty good. I need to get that burr bigger though at the tip. Make sure it didn't slip on me. It didn't. Crescent is still there. A little bit more. And I can kind of see in the shadow in here. If you look down, you can sort of see. See, I'm looking straight down. If I'm beyond that, that bad nick. And this was the blade that had it. Are both of them the same? same blade with the nick. Yeah, same blade. Same blade, the front blade. She's got to be cutting a ring or something. I would say she probably just recently got engaged and she's not used to wearing or wearing a ring on that left hand and that's what's happened. I'm going to go ahead and do this as a two-step thing. I'm going to go ahead and pull my burr off and look close and see if I'm beyond that nick. I am. I am. So I really don't need anything this aggressive for this blade because it didn't have that bad a nick. So I'm going to pull this off, put a 
So now I've got I've got a fresh 1,000 on here, and I'm going to go back over this blade the second time, and then this one for the first time. That's rare that you would use two different abrasives for two for the both sides of the shears. In fact, I don't know if I've ever done that. I guess I must have somewhere in the last 30 years. But um, this is interesting. Let me show you this. I see such interesting things when I sharpen. This one, the metal is coming off like a hair. And you can see, even though it had a lot I needed to take off, there is just the size of a hair. Let's see if I can get this focused here. Oh yeah, you see that looks like a hair on there? That's not a hair. That's the metal that's come off. And that's all the metal we've removed. Well, I might have removed a little bit more at the tip, but that's about it. So I'm feeling to see if it feels smooth, if I've got it all the way down, and it's not feeling smooth there. I'm gonna work on that tip a little bit more. And you want to look and make sure you haven't removed so much metal, your rod line's gone too. That's the other issue. Got it a little bit more at the tip. Next step, I'm going to pull my burr off. is gone. Burr is gone. Polishing pad right here. to see if it feels smooth and it doesn't feel smooth. That one doesn't feel smooth either. Let's see if the nail buffer is going to fix it. If not, I might have to go back and polish it some more. rough right there. I'm going to polish that. Still feeling nicks all the way down it. I just got to take off more metal. More metal. More metal. Don't be afraid to take off the amount of metal. You got to take off to get all the nicks out. So I thought I had plenty off. <laughs> It's 
still feel a nick right here. Nick there, but that spot off the tip's gone. That's got it. This one had a lot of a lot of stuff on that side. Still something right there. got to move my this back down so they're actually a sharper angle than they were before which is not a problem because I did them at 40 instead of 45 so they're probably actually now at 45 because I didn't I got interrupted and didn't get to didn't move this back into place my detente and move it back so I'll have it ready for the next year so this one should be done. We'll test it. If it's good, then I'm gonna go off camera and finish that one. So we can send it out today. And we're just doing basic sharpening. Now we may get into trouble when we start putting it together because there was some weird, weird hardware is what I call the screws in that part of the shear. Felt a little roughness. What is that up in here? There's a roughness right there. I might use my rough part of my nail buffer. Still feel a nick there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So still a nick here. <laughs> Crazy interruptions. Okay, I'm getting my pieces out. Yeah, that's the same crazy washer that's, and the Jaguar scissors. I can see why he was saying he wouldn't have that part. And there's no clicker plates, so you're supposed to um, replace this, but I don't have that part, so. Um, Slide that into place. I think this will hold though. I poke it down in the hole. The most time consuming part about sharpening tends to be fiddling with these stupid screws. Anytime you have a shear that's not hollowed out, you don't have to do the rod line, don't take it apart. You just make an extra work for yourself. Okay, I got it too tight now. Let's loosen it up some. 
and I'm feeling where it should be. I don't know whether I'm supposed to put finger rest on here or not. Maybe so, since he said it didn't have the parts. Been using it a long time without finger rest. Guess maybe I need to call him. Okay, let's cut. I'm going to cut my first one some dry tissue and then I'll cut it wet. I'm doubling up the tissue. Do you remember how I cut before? Now once I think I've got it right, I go in here and I wiggle it. Tighten it up as needed. And let's see if it cuts wet. If it's wet, that one's done and I'll do the other shear. No, I don't like the way that cuts. Let's go over it with a nail buffer. That's my first step. Nail buffer. If it doesn't cut. Double check that screw. Nail buffer did it. There's still a teeny tiny nick in here. But I barely feel it. I'm going to leave it alone. That shear is done. So I got one more shear to send this person to finish it off before you give it back, especially with the amount of work we did at it, with the amount of work we did on it, you want to double check that tip. And that tip, if I look close up to the light, there's a little gap. Even though, even though it cut, there's still a little gap. So I've got to either take something off the bumper bend the handles or shorten it. There's room to take something off that bumper. You can use a razor blade. I like an old cuticle nipper. Um, another thing you can use is a lighter. That might be better on this one. I think I'm going to use a lighter because if that comes out, it's not one that goes through with a hole and that's going to be hard to put back in there. And I don't want to accidentally knock it out. Let me grab a lighter. So here's what I mean about fixing it with a lighter. I'm gonna, and you can tell I've never smoked I have a hard time with this thing. I'm going to melt that bumper just a little bit. When it catches on fire, blow it and close it. And it'll melt to just the right size. Almost melted too much, but it definitely is coming together. It's the perfect match here. And I'm going to round off that tip a little bit because it is, it's a little bit pointy, but it does not overlap. So let's grab one of my plates here. Anyone will do. And... Just round, just, and I'm just rounding that off a little bit. And the mystery of the crescent tips, well, mostly it's solved. We think it was because she was cutting her rings, had some maybe just got engaged, I'm thinking, and wasn't used to a ring being here. She's holding her shears and she's cutting like this, and hitting a ring and that would have hit this blade first so that's done we're going to send them out to her if you have questions about sharpening get in touch with us and make sure you subscribe so that you can catch all our videos when they come out hey i'm bonnie mcgowan and this is what i do about every monday i'll be uploading a new video so if you want to see them and catch them make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell if you have any comments or suggestions of some videos you'd like to see make sure you let me know i answer all the comments now if you're looking for the tools that i used in this video and the different things that i used those should be in links below or on the product page, or if not, you should find them on my website, Benika.com. Uh, there's all kinds of things in the description below on how you can connect and contact me. So stay sharp. I'll see you in the next video.